Vibrations are everywhere. The music playing on the radio, a train passing by, or even the mobile phone in your pocket. All civil structures are vibrating as well, most of the time at vibration levels that are unobservable for us humans. In some cases, however, the vibration levels can be that large that we can see them with the naked eye. In the following seven minutes, we take you on a journey through the exciting world of dynamics of structures. We will show you how even skyscrapers and bridges can be brought into motion. Let us start with a remarkable example. Here you see a footbridge that weighs over 70 ton. Look very carefully while two persons with a total weight of only 114 kilograms start to move gently up and down. Isn't it surprising that only two people are able to make this footbridge vibrate at such great levels? The remainder of this movie will show you how and why this footbridge is vibrating. Let's begin with a small scale structure. Consider a concrete slab supported at its left and right end. At midspan of the slab, we will add a certain dead weight and while we do this, we will measure the deflection of the slab using a dial gauge. Here you see our concrete slab as well as a dial gauge on the left. A single person will now stand at midspan of the slab. On the dial, you can clearly see that as a result of the added weight, the slab deflects in a static way. Exactly doubling this weight, and please note the good balanced backpack, results in a deflection that is twice as large. This experiment shows that statically, the reaction or response of the structure is proportional to the amplitude of the applied load. Let us remember those two levels on the dial and compare them to what happens when the person is no longer standing still, but will move gently up and down. In this case, you can see that the amplitudes of the vibrations are significantly larger than the initial static deflection. This small experiment shows that even a small force with well-chosen characteristics can result into a large and sometimes even dangerous response. The wonderful thing about the dynamics at play is that whether it concerns the small slab or even the Empire State Building, there are only three basic characteristics of the structure we need to know in order to understand and predict its dynamic behavior. You could call these the basic characteristics of structural dynamics, a toolbox that allows you to predict the dynamic behavior of the structure. Let's take a look at the first characteristic, the natural frequencies. The rate at which this spring mass system is moving up and down is its natural frequency. This can be easily determined by counting the number of cycles per second. For this nearly undamped system, there is a continuous exchange of potential and kinetic energy. This without any loss of energy. I think you can imagine that by taking a stiffer spring, the natural frequency would increase, whereas by taking a larger mass, the natural frequency will decrease. This last case is illustrated by the following movie, where two times the same spring was used, but where the mass attached to the right spring is four times larger. You can now observe that the natural frequency of the system has reduced by a factor of two. These elements together illustrate the formula above, indicating that the natural frequency of the system will increase with an increasing stiffness k and will decrease with an increasing mass m. The same applies for real structures. How more stiff a structure, how higher its natural frequencies. How larger its mass, how lower its natural frequencies. We should add that the spring mass systems that are shown here have only one natural frequency. On the other hand, real structures, like bridges and buildings, have multiple rhythms or natural frequencies at which they like to vibrate. The second dynamic characteristic in our toolbox is the mode shape. This characteristic will tell us how the structure is vibrating when excited at one of its natural frequencies a phenomenon we call resonance. Here you see a small scale structure, a portal frame. Let's have a look at what happens if this structure is excited by a force with a certain frequency. 
Look carefully to see that this force is applied at the bottom of the right column. The frequency of this force, or thus the rhythm at which it pushes the structure, is increased until it reaches the first natural frequency and thus until resonance occurs. Identical to the case of the spring mass system you saw earlier, the structure is vibrating along its equilibrium position. But looking at it carefully, you can also recognize a specific shape. We call the shape the mode shape. This shape is describing the deformation of the structure that corresponds to one of its natural frequencies. If we now further increase the forcing frequency, also the second and third mode shape are revealed. These movies show you that the structures have multiple natural frequencies and, corresponding to each of these natural frequencies, is a mode shape that describes how the structure will deform when excited at that natural frequency. We return again to our toolbox. By now, we know the natural frequencies and mode shapes. A last essential element is damping. Again, this is something with which we are confronted day to day. With everything we do, we lose energy. And the same is true for a structure when vibrating. Here you see again the concrete slab, now with two persons on top of it. On the right, you see the real-time measured vibrations of the slab. Using a heel drop, the slab is brought into motion. The slab starts to vibrate, but the amplitudes of the vibration are decreasing in time. This phenomenon is due to dissipation of energy and, for the present case, due to the inherent damping of the structure. The lower the damping, the longer it will take for the vibration to die out, but also the easier it will be for the persons to initiate and increase the vibration levels at resonance. Together, the natural frequencies, mode shapes and model damping ratios make up the identity of the structure determining its dynamic behavior. We can use this toolbox to predict the vibrations of the structure, but, if necessary, we can also use it to prevent or mitigate vibrations. For example, for the previous tested portal frame, a small substructure was designed with the objective to absorb the vibration energy and thereby to limit the vibration levels at other desired locations of the structure. Similar tools or vibration mitigation measures are used to limit the vibration levels of large-scale structures such as the Millennium Bridge in London and the Taipei World Financial Center in Taiwan. So what exactly happened on that footbridge of 70 ton? Let's analyze this by using our toolbox of dynamic characteristics. First of all, we selected one of the natural frequencies of the footbridge. This frequency is giving us the rhythm at which we need to jump to initiate a resonant response. Belonging to this natural frequency is a specific shape, the mode shape. This is telling us where we need to jump. And finally, we have the damping. The damping was in this case small, making it easy for us to reach large vibration levels. This story about structural dynamics shows you that even a small force with well-chosen characteristics can result into a large and sometimes dangerous response. However, by using the toolbox of the structure, we are able to predict these vibrations and, if necessary, we can use this toolbox to find an adequate solution.